When was the last time you walked on pure white sand, swam in crystal clear waters without a soul in sight? Well, I have today on Fukuok Island. It's only an hour flight from Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and I'm here to discover its local delicacies, its seafood, and what it's famous for, pepper plantations, and its pungent fish sauce. In the early 17th century, Fukuok was a desolate area where Vietnamese and Chinese immigrants earned their living from sea cucumbers. In 1869, the French occupied the island and after being liberated by the Vietnamese in 1975, Fukuok was converted into an ideal tourist destination for seafood and nature lovers. Fukuok Island is the, the number one undeveloped island in the world. So get here as soon as you can. It's just secluded, pristine, it's pretty amazing. Now the seafood here is top class. I've got these huge prawns here that I'm just going to simply fry up, salt and pepper style. Bit of chilli as well. So the first step, now in Vietnam we like to leave all the shell, the head, the legs, everything on there. Um, I'll cook it, and then if you want to peel it off later, go ahead. But the crispiness of the texture of the shell stays on. All right, so now I've got some, just some corn flour, or you can use potato starch if you like. Just kind of dust each prawn and shake off the flour. Now, I've got my heat on high there. Now, when you're cooking these prawns, just cook a few at a time, because once you put a whole heap of prawn into oil, the heat reduces very quickly and you lose the temperature. You need high heat. Now driving to this island, we've been through the jungle, the rainforest, the mountains, and we're surrounded by cashew trees. Now if you've never seen a cashew tree before or a cashew fruit, this is it. The cashews in this casing, you open it up and the beautiful cashews in there. Now the fruit is actually quite nice as well. You've got to slice it, finely slice there, and you dip it in salt and chili, maybe with a bit of lemon. Mm. It's quite tart, it's quite dry. It leaves this tannin filling on your palate. This is my salt and pepper mix. Two teaspoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of footwork black pepper, a teaspoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of five spice powder. It just brings more flavor and aromatics to the prawns. Now I've already dry roasted that in a hot pan. Dust that off. Just try a little bit here. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good. In it goes. One minute's all it needs. Nice and crisp. I don't like overcooking prawns. Never overcook your prawns. I'll just let that cook there. Now, once that's done, I'm gonna drain it over here. Just let all the oil seep out of it. I've got fresh chili, diced garlic, red Asian shallots, and spring onion. And that's all you need. Very simple dish. Cook it at the beach. Drink your beer with it for sure. Okay, you're going to take those out. Ooh, they're looking good. One more. Right. Now once that's draining, I'm going to take my hot oil off, so be really careful. Grab my clean pan. Please stay on little fire. Be good to me. I'm almost ready. Okay, now I'll just fry my garlic first. Red Asian shallots. Fresh chili. Now I'm just gonna stand here to block the wind because it's really windy behind me and this is almost done. 
Okay. Now we've got my spring onions. I'm gonna fry that up. Look at the colour. Throw those in. Last one in. Now I've got my salt and pepper mix. As I'm putting that in, I'm just gonna toss them around. Now that's looking colourful, vibrant, and delicious. Coat that all up with the spring onion, the chilli, the salt and pepper mix, the fire spice. That's ready to go. Now there you have your Thurm Rang Mui. Crispy salt and pepper prawns with a squeeze of lime and salt and pepper mix. This island is very special to me. I never miss an opportunity to visit and take advantage of all it has to offer. About 80% of the locals rely on the fishing industry for survival and like most cottage industries in Vietnam, hard work and little return is normal. As you drive around inland, you'll see many busy fishing villages. I always stop and explore and never walk away without learning something from these hard working people. I'm in a fish sauce factory on the island and it feels like I've just stepped into a huge winery. Now these huge wooden vats hold 10 tonnes of liquid, so 7 tonnes of black anchovies and 3 tonnes of salt. Now what the salt does, it extracts all of the water out of the fish, it's weighed down and it's fermented for over 12 months. Now what's happening now is it's, we're getting the first extract and you look at the colour, it's a bit amber, it's a golden brown and the pungency is so strong but the taste is very delicate and it's actually a little bit sweet. Now this is the essential ingredient in Vietnamese cuisine. Vietnam buys and consumes 200 million litres of fish sauce a year. It's quite incredible and I would have this on my table, not in the pantry. This is the young coconut. In Vietnam's heat and humidity, I always have one of these to refresh myself and check out her knife skills. So sweet and so refreshing. Delicious. Mm. Mm. I've been waiting all day for this. I'm on one of the many charter boats that leave from the main port of Phuc Quoc. I really hope I can catch a squid to show you an extremely simple recipe. I remember when I was younger, the family used to go out to rocks like this with a bucket in hand, and we used to always go out and pick little cockles and little pippies and vongole that stuck to the rocks come home, we use an electric heater and cook them up. So this is what I have to use to catch my squid. This hand line and these things that are called squid jig thingy majiggies. 
see how I go. <laughs> I think I've got something. Oh, shit. I think this squid jig actually worked. It's my first squid I've ever caught. I've got it, got it. Got one, got one. Look at that. This is amazing. Wow. I'm so stoked that I caught this squid. It's my first squid and it's pretty big. It's around a kilo and look how fresh it is. As soon as I touch it, it discolors and it's like warning signals, warning signals, I'm getting caught. So I'm just gonna turn this over. Look at its tentacles, it just sucks onto me. That's how they catch their prey. They suck on them, bring them in, and they eat them. Now this recipe is very, very simple. It's the best recipe to do on a boat or on the beach. It's fantastic. All you need is a squid. Cut this in half. You get a nice pair of sharp scissors. And I'm just gonna coat it in salt and chili. If these scissors will help me out. Yep, they're doing a right job. And I'm just gonna lightly, gently pull out his innards. Now if you see here, that's the ink sac there, so just be really careful not to burst it or you get black ink everywhere. Now the black ink, they squirt at you when they're in trouble. It's a warning signal to their mates, to their family, and also to scare away predators. I'm just gonna rip him open there. And I'm just gonna try to take out the the cartilage, which is a quite a clear, transparent cartilage. Rip that out. This one's a tough one. There it is. Now don't waste this. Feed it to the birds. There you go, throw that out. Now that's nice and clean. Now all I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna leave the skin on because I love the skin. I think it's nice and chewy and it gives great aroma when it's char grilled. So I'm just gonna marinate this and then char grill it. I'm not even gonna wash it, it's just that fresh ocean flavor. Throw that there. Mortar and pestle, got my chili. I've chopped around four chilies up. Throw that in. I'm just gonna pound that. Crush it, that's good. And just two teaspoons of salt. Sea salt is best. Throw that in and just pound that and mix it together well. This is very authentic fisherman's dish. Okay, so chilies all pounded with a salt. Just gonna put some on the top there, on the skin. And you can use gloves if you want, but I'm fine with chili. So I'm just gonna rub it in nice and even around the surface. And if you don't have gloves and you're using your hands, don't touch your eyes. And for the boys, don't go to the bathroom without washing your hands. Okay, I'm just gonna flip that over and do the same to the other side. Bit more chili, the rest of that. Go. I've got my pine wood burning there on this clay burner. I've got these things here which you should have at home, essential to the barbecue Vietnamese kitchen. They're like little wire racks and they fold up so you don't need to weigh the squid down when you put it on the grill. It's genius really. So I'm going to put this on there. Fold her up. Now look at that, how easy was that? I don't need to weigh it down, I didn't need to score it. I'm just gonna put it over the grill. And just remember, when cooking squid, it's either cooked fast or it's cooked slow. In between will be just rubbery rubbish. So fast or slow. I'm gonna grill this for around three minutes on each side. Char grilled in nice colored, nice charred. I'm gonna dip it into my lemon with fukuok pepper and a bit of salt. took less than five minutes to prepare. Freshly caught calamari from the Gulf of Thailand, Muk Nung Tang, char calamari with chili and sea salt.
Vietnam is known for its free-range chickens. No battery hens here. Chickens are left to roam around the street everywhere. So I got up really early in the morning, went to the markets to choose the very best. I picked them out, they're weighed and slaughtered right before me on the spot. I'm in Vietnam's largest pepper plantation. Now Phu Quoc is famous for its fish sauce and its pepper crops. Walking through these plantations, I feel like I'm in a vineyard. There's a thousand trees here growing fresh, fresh pepper. Now here is a young pepper. It's green and you can use this in cooking, which I'll use today. But as you get to the red ones, as they get a bit more ripe, you can only dry those and grind them up. Now these are the superior pepper. So here I've got a whole chicken and today I'm gonna to cook a chicken dish which is slowly braising fresh green pepper. Very simple, it takes around an hour to slowly braise. So I've got my free range chicken. Now this one is around 1.5 kilos, not too big. It's a perfect size. They were running around just a few minutes ago. I'm gonna marinate this first with the fresh green peppercorns. Now these are young peppercorns. Just behind me here, I'm gonna to try to choose one. And at first it's sweet and then the spice hits the palate a little bit later on. And it's quite subtle spice. I'm so lucky to be cooking in this environment now. It's absolutely awesome. If you come around here, you see the red ones. Now the red ones are only for drying. These are the superior ones. They're hand-picked, everything's hand-picked by the owner and his little seven-year-old son and six-year-old daughter. It's so adorable. They soak it in cold water overnight and then they dry it and they just hand peel it all off until it becomes white. Now this is real white pepper. The stuff you get at the supermarkets, it's been bleached. Now this white pepper in Fukuok, they do not sell. It's only for friends and the family around the area. So something really important, this is the most premium pepper you can get. And with a green pepper, this is dried in the sun for around three to four days, and that's the result, black pepper. But I'm using the young green pepper today, so I'm gonna pick a few of these. Is it another one? Perfect, that one's a good one. Okay, so I just need to bruise these slowly. Now I don't want to crush them, I just want to bruise them. So you need around 50 grams of these green peppers. And you can find these anywhere at the Asian markets. Grown locally. Okay, so mortar and pestle, just gonna bruise that. Now I'm not pounding this, I'm just bruising it. I just want to open up all the flavors and let it all come out. Okay, that's good. Just gonna pour that into my mixing bowl. Got my 50 grams of pepper. I need two teaspoons of minced garlic. Two teaspoons of salt. And two teaspoons of sugar. Now I'm just gonna mix that up nice and evenly. Coat all the chicken. Get all that pepper there. Even stick some under the skin. Give it lots of flavor. Now there's nothing wasted on this pepper plantation. So they've got three grades of pepper. Of course the superior is the white one I was talking about. The second one is a dried green. And the third one are the peppers that fall to the ground and they dry. They're actually picked up throughout this whole plantation and saved and used for the third grade of pepper. It's a lot of work and it's all hand-picked. There's no machinery here, all organic. I'm just gonna marinate that for 30 minutes, let that sit, and I'll come back to it soon. Now while the chicken marinates, I'm gonna take a closer look at this traditional pepper refining process. This wooden mill separates the fresh peppercorns from the stem. This is such an efficient way of processing the crop. The drying process takes around three to four days in the Vietnamese sun. Now this lady rakes the peppercorns every hour, ensuring all the sides are dried equally. Quality control is her job. So I've just got a hot pot there. 
bit of oil. I'm gonna put some garlic in. This looks really hot, that's good. Garlic, saute that up. Fresh peppercorns. Look at that, oh. Bring out all the aroma. And I'm just gonna brown and seal off all my chicken. Start off with your little drumstick there. Wings. Just gonna seal that up and close all the flavor. Ooh. Okay, let's see what it looks like now. A bit more. Okay, that's good. The other one. Now I've diced up two tomatoes. Just gonna give that a bit of color and some anita oil. So around three tablespoons of that. Mix that up again. That's gonna bring out all the nice colors with it. Just be very careful not to rip the skin off. Just gently toss it. Now we've just plucked two whole coconuts. These are the young coconut with a young coconut juice. I'm gonna slowly braise it in this. So the sweetness, the natural sweetness is so delicious. They're pretty heavy, so when you're plucking them, stay clear from under the tree. I'm just gonna pour that in. Now I'm gonna need around two and a half liters for that. So I think two of these coconuts will do. There's one. Oh yes. Just need another one just to coat the chicken. Beautiful, perfect amount. Okay. Now if you have big knives like I do, this is the best way to rehydrate your body. Now I'm just gonna bring this to the boil, and once it comes up to the boil, which is just about now, I'm just gonna skim all the impurities off so the broth is clear and it's clean. So that's looking really good. I've got a whole carrot, I've just cubed them up. I'm just gonna throw those in. I've got eight red Asian shallots, just whole, throw them in whole. Half an onion, just need little wedges. And I'm just gonna season this now with four tablespoons of Fukuok fish sauce, first extract. Okay, and lastly, just one teaspoon of salt. And that's all in, I'm just gonna give that a quick taste test. Mm. That's actually so good as it is right now. Once I reduce it down in 40 minutes, all the flavor from the carrots, the onions, the sweetness and the spiciness from the pepper, it's just gonna be delicious. And the coconut, when using coconut juice, it just draws out sweetness, natural sweetness. You don't need to use water or stock. And there's my chicken, slowly braised in young coconut juice and green peppercorns. I've had such a fantastic time on this lazy island of Fukuok. I'm gonna enjoy my last day with this freshly pressed sugar cane juice. Get over here and enjoy the fresh seafood, hang out with the friendly locals. I'm gonna get out of the tree and have my drink. On our next episode, we travel to Fan Tia. I'll show you how the locals hand make rice noodles and rice paper, a process that hasn't changed for hundreds of years. I'll share with you some unforgettable experiences that will remain with me